Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Then come back, check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Wednesday, August 14th. <clears throat> Our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women. And we are in day three of week 33, and our focus for week 33 is God's discipline. Our scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 2, out of the NIV. And although it's not my favorite uh, translation, it you know, for a variety of reasons, but um, sometimes it, it does, when it gets it right, it's it's good. So, my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Anybody who's involved with agriculture or gardening of any kind, you know that fruit trees need to be pruned, as do roses and other things. And when you prune, they produce more. So there's good stuff there. Now, in the parable of the vine, <clears throat> Jesus described the process of pruning. Pruning is quite a bit more involved than simply lopping off an entire branch. Pruning involves selectively cutting useless dead wood, leaving the productive fruitful parts of the branch. If a branch could feel pain, it would experience a great deal of it when pruned. Okay. And I've known this with roses in, uh, in the backyard, although I'm not an expert rose grower by any stretch of the imagination. Is that an expression, rose grower? But I know that when you have a branch that's not bearing any blossoms, it's drawing uh, food away from the other branches. So you're cutting it off in order for the other branches to get more of the nutrition that's being sucked away by this branch that's doing nothing. So, all right. Unlike a branch, you do feel pain, anguish, and grief as God cuts dead wood from your life. Just imagine the areas of your life that are not productive for you. The areas of your life that zap your energy, that draw things from you, that leave you completely unproductive for the kingdom of God, which is what we're created for. Okay. We have to say bye-bye to some stuff. All right. Not that we're to have a dead life with no interests or hobbies or anything like that. We just have to prioritize. And this is where we seek the Lord. Because he knows what's going to add benefit to our life and what isn't. <clears throat> God cuts dead wood from your life. He demands you surrender sinful habits and unproductive activities and pastimes to him. Surrender those things. Now get this. Sinful, unproductive. Sinful and unproductive. All right. Wastes of time. Surrender all those things to him. Let him speak to you. Because look, we've got believers in every facet, in every hobby. We have, a, we have believers in sports, in the entertainment industry. We have sports in the, we have Christians in the arts. We have Christians in education. Do you see what I'm saying? God has his representatives in every field. Where does he want you? So don't take it as some um, cut and dry. And this is the wrong thing, that the wrong attitude that people have about Christianity. Oh, we're supposed to have this dead life and do nothing but worship God. Well, <clears throat> we're going to be doing that anyway in heaven. But heaven is the best place ever in the world. And everybody wants to go there because we have a loving God. Our mind cannot conceive what God has for us. Our mind can't conceive it. It, everything about heaven, it fills us with joy and worship, and it's filled with love, all those things. Okay, so what down here is robbing from us? And this is what the sinful habits and unproductive activities and pastimes do. They steal from us. They take away from us. So ask the Lord, please show me which things I need to cut out of my life or lessen. I need to lessen their value in my life. Sometimes we put ourselves all in to something that's not productive. Okay. I prayed this over my daughters too, because the pressures of our society in America tell us my kid has to be doing a different activity every night. If they're going to have a well-balanced 
what we have is stressed out, anxious children who are not enjoying their childhood. Okay. So keep that in mind. You're not going to give your child an edge. Okay. You, you submit your child to the Lord. <clears throat> you submit their future to the Lord. God will order their steps. God will open the doors where they are to be. Okay. We need to stop stressing about, oh, this kid's going to have, I, I remember what was it? What was the thing? Oh, baby boom. And there's one scene in baby boom right after. And if you don't know that movie, it's so funny. Diane Keaton is in it. And it's one of my favorite movies. And um, she's this single career woman who inherits a baby from a, some obscure cousin that she'd met one time when she was young who, and uh, this cousin and his wife died in a plane crash and she was the only living relative. So the baby comes to her and she's unprepared. And it's, it's a comedy, a romantic comedy. <clears throat> but in any case, as she's, you know, embracing this, she has her, her new daughter in the park and the baby's about a year and a half, maybe going up on two years old. And she's overhearing these mothers talk about their child getting into the right preschool and so-and-so didn't get in and oh my God. And, you know, they're talking about all these things that must be in order for her child to have some kind of an edge in life. And they're like, oh, she's way behind the others. It's comical, but literally that's how some people act and behave. Okay. You are the first teacher your child has. And it's important for us to submit and surrender all our ideas and everything to the Lord and say, is this something I need to do? Anything you do to invest time with your child is a benefit. That's something we should be doing as parents and even grandparents pouring into our children. We are the first teachers. God holds us accountable, not the preschool. I'm thankful for preschools, for parents who have to work and they, you know what I'm saying? but it doesn't take the place of parenting. Anyway, unproductive activities and pastimes, submit those to him and let him reveal to you the things that you need to be doing so that you're not running yourself ragged or your children ragged into the ground, okay? You're often passionate about them and they consume much of your time and energy, but bear no fruit for eternity. What is the eternal value? Take your interests and ask the Lord, how can I use this interest, this skill, this pastime, how can I use this to glorify you and bring people to Jesus? Those who've been given a platform who are believers, who are Christians, who are not shy in the least, not the, oh, I thank God, and that's it. I mean, they are like, no, you need to be surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only reason I'm doing well in sports. Those people who use that kind of language, not just kiss their fingers and, and give a thumbs up to God. That's a little bit more than just a gesture. Okay. It needs to be evidenced in your life. Okay. God determines to snip off those things while you often fight to spare them from his shears. Okay. There's a lot of things we don't want to give up on. And God is saying, you need to let go of this so that <clears throat> this other side can flourish. He knows better what's going to bring better blessing into your life. And I'm not just talking about eternal blessing. I'm talking about blessing on this earth. His, remember, he's for you. He's not against you. He wants your life to be blessed and he wants you to have life and have it to the full. So if he's making a decision and determining, and he knows best, that you got to say bye-bye to this, just trust him. If, he, if you can see the door closing on things, you'll know. Don't fight. Don't fight what the Lord is doing, Okay. Don't fight against what God is trying to do in your life to bring better blessing, to bring better enjoyment, to bring more joy. He knows what he's doing. And being in relationship with him helps us to develop our ears so we can hear him better and to see in the spirit and understand and hear his voice when he's telling us it's okay. We do need to say goodbye to this and he'll give you hints. Okay. There was a friend who, not a friend, this is a woman I heard about, and hers happened to be a political kind of awakening. But the way that things happen is really kind of um, exactly how God can do things as well. She loved to knit. Knit or crochet was one of those things. I want to say it was knitting because it was something that's, uh, you know, a little bit more old-fashioned and whatnot. But she was part of this knitting group who would come together 
and they loved to knit and they had such a great time and all this other stuff started happening and you know she was of a one particular political persuasion and um you know she didn't think anything of it because free speech and all this other stuff and there was other people in the group who were of a different political persuasion and it wasn't until the uh 2016 election that she began to realize her political persuasion was a little more toxic than she thought because here's this group of women who've been meeting for several months years and suddenly you had some of them flat out attacking with with horrible anger and venom other ladies in the group that they had been friends with and she was just like wait a minute wait a minute i joined this group in order to enjoy my pastime and even though she was of the same political persuasion of those ladies who were attacking other women in the group she had enough sense about her to say hold it this is not why i joined this group and she started actually taking a look and examining what political ideology she was embracing what exactly am i embracing that makes other people who hold the same ideology feel that it is okay to attack someone with such hatred and venom. And then she made the switch. And then those people that she thought were friends, people that she stood up with in their weddings, people who she babysat their children, people who were part of her life, they turned on her too. She knew it was time to say goodbye and she wound up cutting that off. And you notice I'm leaving out which party was which. I'm sure you can figure out which was what, but because that's not what I'm about. What I'm about is Christianity and us who are believers following the Lord Jesus Christ and following his example, no matter what. And But it's an example of how you could be involved in something you absolutely love and then something happens to kind of signal to you, yikes, I need to step away from this. It could happen like that. Not that it necessarily will, but you get my drift, okay? As Christians, we have to behave the way the Lord asks us to behave in every aspect of our life. We do not compartmentalize and say, oh, I'm a believer here, but politically I believe this. You better make sure what you're, the ideology and platform you're supporting and getting behind is in perfect alignment with the word of God. That's all I'm saying. As a believer, if you're not a believer, God bless you. I hope you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the freedom to choose, okay? We do. Freedom to choose or not to choose. But as believers, I'm talking to those who claim the name of Christ. You better make sure that the platform that you're getting behind and casting a vote for is in alignment with God's word, period. Okay. God accomplishes most of his pruning in your life by discipline and scourging. Eee, there's that word again. He frustrates your wayward plans and brings your errant dreams to nothing. Okay. He often forcibly removes things from your tightly clutching fists and you wonder why God isn't giving you the desires of your heart. Okay. If you're, if you keep, pursuing something that's bearing no fruit, that's bringing you nothing. You have to begin to ask, and I'm not saying give up on dreams, okay? Go to the dream giver and say, Lord, show me. Show me what you purposed for my life. Give me the dream you desire for me to have. Sometimes we're in pursuit of fame, fortune, all those things, because our culture and our society says we must. The, we, that's why they're called influencers on social media. That's, you know, we're in a very materialistic, we're in a very, where they say, if you're not this, this, or this, then you're nothing. You're not successful. And that's not true. Okay. You can have a very blessed, successful life, but what kind of fruit is being born through the vanities and all those things? Okay. Not the, believe you me. I like doing my hair and makeup. I'm a bit of a ham myself. I could put on a show and you know, I have girls that are in the music industry. I have daughters that are in the music industry. Do I want them pursuing fame and fortune? No. Do I want them to be successful? Yes. I want them to be successful. I have son-in-laws that are in the music industry. Okay. I want them blessed wherever they are. 
And I want it to be as God opens that door. A lot of people in the entertainment industry, there's, there's a little, there's an evil system in there that they got to bow the knee to. And it has to do nothing with the talent within them, but everything to do with submitting to something ungodly. Yikes. I think y'all know what I'm talking about. And that's why every bit of our life has to be submitted and surrendered to the Lord to make sure he is the one who is behind it and pursuing it. Can people achieve success without including God? Yeah, they can. But then the Bible says, what does it benefit a man if he uh, gains the whole world but loses his soul? A lot of people that, especially the ones that are the really rich elites and they seem to have reached the pinnacle of fame and fortune, many of them do not know the Lord. They are bowing the knee to another God and they, when, when the time comes and eternity comes knocking, their eternity is not going to be a pleasant one. Okay, I have great compassion and I pray for the lost. It's going to be a horrible day for the Lord when he has to say, depart from me. He doesn't want to say those words to anyone. All right. If you feel God isn't giving you the desires of your heart, know this. He has a higher good in mind for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. <clears throat> we thank you for every aspect of the life we live here. And we thank you that you love us and care enough to prune away those things in our life that are not bearing fruit, that are not benefiting us, that are actually robbing from us strength, robbing from us blessing. Help us to not resist your pruning, but give us eyes that see and ears that hear and speak to our hearts and tell us, Lord, what things we need to step away from. What things are not benefiting us? What hobbies, what habits, what things are taking from us instead of adding and blessing in our life? Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Those who are in the midst of pruning right now, I pray, Lord, you just give them an extra touch of grace. Speak to their hearts and help them to realize, Lord, what you are doing is for their good. Help them, Father God, to recognize and understand your loving hand at work in their lives. We come against any spirits of confusion and anything the enemy would do to trip up and cause them to fall back in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back, check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Hubby and I will be going to the gym today. I'm just going to do a light little, you know, treadmill kind of walk. I love doing it with the raised up um, incline. I'll, I'll get the speed up to about 3.8. I don't want to run because that can, that hurts my feet and my knees and my hips, but I like a brisk walk uphill and that really, really gets my motor revving. So I hope you guys have a great productive day. God bless you and bye until next time.